Hey guys, uh, this is Jamie. So today I want to talk about uh, specifically something which is more related to my psychology field, I guess, if you're new here or if you're not aware. Um, I'm studying to be a psychologist. I'm pretty much finishing off. Being a trans person, I've had different talks through the years. I've been to different, uh, I've volunteered for many years. Uh, whether it was formally or informally, I've um, I've been an activist for a long while, more like in the traditional sense of the word, and in the untraditional, I've obviously been doing YouTube for a long while to raise awareness when it comes to trans issues and other LGBT issues. Um, so I wanted to talk about something which has been used a lot when it comes to sort of discussing gender identity and stuff, which is. Uh, well, specifically right now, which is the gender unicorn chart, which, uh, spoiler alert, absolutely hate. Uh, so we're going to dive into that versus the sort of original um, version. I think it was version one, version two was roughly the same of the uh, genderbred person. And that's the one I was introduced to like years and years back when I was just understanding stuff. And uh, I do understand that obviously it's good when we move forward, when we have new tools to express ourselves and everything, but I do have a lot of criticisms about the gender unicorn. So today I really wanted to sort of address that because it's something that uh, I have spoken to people about uh, when it comes to preparing talks, preparing different activities. and. Uh, and I've been noticing, like, when I talk to people who are in high school, who go to these uh, LGBT meetings, and uh, in general, there is obviously, uh, thankfully, a notion among schools to uh, raise awareness of uh, trans people, different sexualities, identities, and etc. So I do think that it is a good idea in general because, well, when I was growing up, I didn't even have sex disease, so what can I say? So it's very difficult for me to go into my adult years, my late teenage years, and uh, not having a notion of a transverse caused me a lot of trauma and uh, a lot of suffering, which I could have easily been avoided. So, so. I'll preface, uh, I'll pop up somewhere here, the gender bad person. So I do want to say that this is what uh, I used, this is what I would explain with, this is what I went uh, different like uh, formations to be a volunteer in and this is something I don't say he's ideal or their ideal, she's ideal, I mean the point is that we But I do have to say that it is very distilled to the point that it is very easy for people to understand. And that's the point, specifically when you're talking to people who are not familiar with the concept, who, who don't understand uh, the genderbred person, it's very easy to understand. At least it is much easier and it makes more sense than the gender you so obviously you have the brain with the identity, you have the heart with attraction, and you have the expression, and you have uh, the sex pointing towards the genitalia, or lack of thereof, when it comes to the gender person. Uh, it feels very straightforward. Um, I mean, let's break it down, sort of, to make it easier. Trans people do not feel comfortable with the gender they are assigned at birth, uh, sex assigned at birth. And there's many different definitions which have been conflicted, discussed which one's the right one or not. Uh, but factually, is it's a discomfort, uh, which is very, very deeply rooted in uh, biology and understanding. And it's not something that you can just psychologically uh, heal. Uh, can, you can't use conversion therapy against it. And um, obviously, it is 
within um, a specific part of the brain. There has been studies which show that uh, when the fetus is getting formed, it, the, uh, basically a rush of hormones goes towards the fetus and depending on that level of hormones that will determine uh, the gender or the gender identity of the person. That can be aligned with uh, the genitals that will be formed, I believe, after or not. I'm sorry, I really don't remember if the gender comes first or the genitals, but the point is there is a misalignment when it comes to trans people. This can include non-binary people, but there are non-binary people which do not feel like they are trans. And uh, in the recently we've has more of an inclination of non-binary people who do feel like they are trans, but obviously every person has a different um, experience, different thoughts on the matter, and I do have to say that we have to appreciate the thoughts of um, the, 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 the individual we're talking to. So if they feel a certain way, we have to respect them. And uh, specifically when it comes to non-binary, there's not as much research, there's not as much awareness. And um, I can only speak from what I know from other non-binary people, what I've seen, uh, because uh, I'm a binary trans guy. So um, I'm pretty basic here. So that's when it comes to identity. Then you have sex, which is the genitalia, kind of what you were seeing, maybe what you had a blood test on to see the chromosomes. And uh, this is where I, f I feel very weird because people often say like, your gender is what's in your pants, but at the same time, people really refuse the notion of what intersex people are, for instance. Intersex people can uh, have a variety of different uh, chromosomic um, uh, codification, they can be XXY, they can be uh, XXX, there, there's a bunch of variations. I'm not a biology student, so I've studied biology a bit ago, but the point is, and uh, regardless of what your chromosomes are, it can be manifested or not. So there are people who are intersex and who can go their entire life without knowing that. Or there are people who uh, have, for instance, uh, XX chromosomes, but it's, it's still, uh, their body is not of a traditional cis female. So we have many cases like that. And um, when it comes to biological sex, there's obviously a big one. A line where it goes from female, male, uh, there's in between, uh, there's both, there's neither, and that is also something that uh, can be applicable to gender as well, which is an association and uh, an explanation which was used in the past, and I have been using it recently as well when it comes to other people to explain what non-binary people are. Uh, I know it's very, very distilled into a bit of sort of uh, simplicity, but we really need to understand that people who are cis, or if you're someone who's cis and hetero and have never encountered and wants to understand this further, I'm really trying to simplify it for you because I understand that this is something that many people don't even think about. And if you're a trans person, you're trying to understand how, how do cis people not understand this. It's literally because it's something that they are just not educated on. And this is why it's very important to have education in our schools to understand what intersex people are, what non-binary people are. And obviously, an non-binary person doesn't have to be intersex. And an intersex people doesn't, uh, person doesn't have to be non-binary. So you have all of that. Now, uh, there's obviously attraction, and uh, which is uh, sexuality, there's romantic attraction as well. I do understand that in this case, the uh, gender bad person had it very simple, and it is a valid point of critique, that it just had attraction and it didn't spe specify that it can have romantic and sexual attraction. 
so I don't understand that critique. Then this is what I personally really enjoy about the gender bad person. And this is what changed in the gender unicorn, which really irritates me. So when it comes to expression, uh, in the original gen gender bad person, it did say that expression is what, how you wear your clothes, your mannerisms, and everything, and it does not equate your gender. And that is very crucial. And we do have to keep in mind that there are certain activities that society can see as uh, something that women do, something that men do. But the gender bad person said that this does not equate the gender. And please understand that uh, when it comes to HRT assessments, and this was an interesting discussion I had the other day with uh, another trans man, where uh, he he's from the he's from the U.S. and I've had in general discussions with different U.S. people uh, that they didn't go through a very thorough assessment. Like they would be less talking to their psychologist, and their psychologist would say, "What if you're trans?" and then they would be addressed and etc. Well. Here in Europe, and in the most cases that I've seen, uh, my case, it's us who go to the psychologist to discuss that. That we are aware that we're trans. And we want to feel comfort in our body. So to me, it was... It's not that it was the first time I've heard about it, but it did sort of shed a bit of light on... Um, because in the US, obviously, it's a very big country. It has different states, different state laws. So obviously, every state has its own regulation, from what I understand. There's uh, nationwide laws for them. So it's very difficult. There's obviously states where it's banned. There's like Florida, which is having a moment, to put it very mildly. So obviously the regulations are different. There's obviously Planned Parenthood with informed consent. But again, from my experience in Europe, it's very cutthroat when it comes to uh, people evaluating you. And um, it's, it's very thorough. And I do want to say that I really trust sort of the experiences I've seen in Europe and I feel sometimes they're a bit too harsh. I've heard of horror stories, and I've obviously heard of stories where they actually know when a person is trans and isn't. So people get sort of sorted properly. And this is also sort of like a question, are you enough trans or are you not enough trans? But I feel like that thing, that question, is more for doctors and professionals to decide. And I do understand that this is a controversial statement from me, but um, I do feel like if you're gonna go on hormones and surgeries, you really need to be assessed for everything possible to you know, be on it. And you need to be moderated through the whole of it because hormones are still a very, I wouldn't say tricky, well, yeah, let, let, let's say tricky uh, thing to sort of put in your body. It is a medication after all, so it needs to be monitored. You can't just do it. But I do understand that there are situations, specific in our world, where trans people are not able to access the healthcare they need. Obviously, there's the UK where you have waiting lists up to 11 years and etc. So I do want to say that this is me speaking from a very privileged bubble. And privileged is like, kind of, because I do have problems, for instance, after all these years, I haven't been able to get a name change. I've got a lot of transphobia from my home country. And I have a lot of trauma regarding that, but when it comes to me living in Portugal, I have been very blessed with that. And it's been a tough week regarding that, so yeah. And um, so you do have to keep in mind that
There are situations which are more difficult. There are situations where obviously trans people have to go to the black market because uh, people are ignorant. They don't understand that being trans isn't a walk in the park. It's very difficult for most of us. I'd say like, I don't know, 80% of us maybe, specifically when it comes to getting treatments to help us. And uh, like my country of birth, like just recently legalized HRT. So, so that's quite difficult to me you know, to say or discuss it. Yeah. And uh, I, I was started like abroad and I'm very thankful. Now, when it comes to, uh, so yeah, I kind of went off, but uh, I do understand that obviously people think that it's really easy, but being trans is not easy. And I do understand that we want to sort of be heard and seeing stuff like the gender unicorn just annoys me because it is not accurate. I have not heard a trans or someone who is very well versed in trans matters complimented. And specifically trans people are the ones who are saying that they are not comfortable with us. So now we have the abomination that is the gender unicorn. The thing that I like about the gender bad person is the fact that the expression is not defined by what's female, what's male. It just says that it is what you personally do, how you express yourself. When it comes to the gender unicorn, the gender unicorn goes back to all stereotypes and says that certain things are either male, female, and then it has a different category as other. Now, in a hypothetical world, it would be understandable, um, but when it comes to, when you're teaching someone, what does other mean? If the person believes in the binary, that is very difficult for someone to understand, and specifically to see a graph and see something uh, that makes no sense to them, it needs to be more simplified. Again, like the gender better person that they so when it comes to gender identity, you have sort of female, woman, girl, male, man, boy, and other genders. Uh, I would have replaced it with non-binary genders and done some sort of graph of, since we're going that strong on the visuals. Gender expression, again, what is a feminine gender expression? What's a masculine gender expression? What's other? So this is relying on stereotypes. And back in the day, like around 10 years ago, for instance, we had very heavy movements in the trans community of like removing gender roles. And I do feel like this is something I have talked about in the past in my videos and it needs to be discussed, especially in these abominations. Um, the things we do do not define our gender to an extent. It is what we feel in regards to dysphoria in our body that makes us trans. So obviously we have social dysphoria. This is me going completely into deep diving. So for someone like, for instance, I wear makeup. Me growing up, I saw a lot of gay men wearing makeup, like on telly, in theater. And to me, that was the association. A gay man is someone who is wearing very, very sort of in-your-face makeup. And I was sort of scolded for not being feminine by wearing very, very in-your-face makeup. And uh, it kind of triggered this association with me because I really was like, I want to be a man and I want to be like those dudes I saw in the theater with like brows and everything. And it wasn't considered drag per se. It was just men in makeup. And that's what I really enjoyed, and that's sort of what left something very important in me. And I really pay homage to that because it really helped me discover myself. So I do not feel that makeup has a gender, in my opinion. 
when it comes to my the rest of my presentation, I pretty much wear what an average dude would. Like sure, I have some like feminine shirts here and there, or like female section matter. But how is like a black t-shirt with a V-cut more feminine than male? I mean, we all had V-cuts. It's just because the section right now doesn't have V-cuts in the men doesn't make it less masculine. Like stuff like that, for instance. Where there's different designer brands which push unisex pieces which, or they, they can be like worn by either person, either either of the thousand genders, you know. So I really disagree with gender expression being masculine or feminine. And I do feel like we're going backwards on this because we are trying to say that um, what do we do does not define us and our expression as well, or like hobbies and etc. And this is, is being really hammered into us. And there is this notion where <clears throat> Like, I feel like there's a lot of discussion on like, okay, I do this, maybe I'm not binary, or maybe I'm trans mask, trans femme, because of that. And I do feel like I'm not trying to invalidate non binary people, but I feel like just because you do one thing or certain things which are not traditionally masculine, traditionally feminine, this does not make you non binary. So, yeah. Um, Sex assigned at birth. This is also a thing, like, I personally use the word transsexual towards myself. And I do understand that a lot of people do not feel comfortable with it. It is considered an out of use words. So I usually say trans or transsexual. I nearly never use transgender unless I'm really trying to sort of make it clear to someone where they're using it. So it's my less, less, less preferred word. When it comes to these things. So in this case, this is something which I always found an issue in the gender bad person, sort of that identity and sex are different. Because I feel like uh, identity and sex, in my opinion, are the same, uh, just because you have a certain sort of chromosome doesn't change anything because there's so much varieties. And when it comes to medical cases, like Again, I've been on HRT for a long while, I've had surgeries, uh, so it's like there's not much left there. Like, I go for blood tests on a male range, I, I do everything in the male range, medically and like when it comes to biology as well. Flood distribution, everything, you name it. So yeah. Uh, then obviously you have physically attracted to and romantically and em emotionally attracted to in the gender income, which I do agree, but the gender expression sort of getting butchered to that really annoys me and uh, I feel like it is very heavy on the eyes. Uh, I have nothing against unicorns, I love unicorns, uh, even though I think he's a bit of a, okay, fine, they're a bit of a, I'm sorry, I, I just tend to very often use he as examples. So yeah, that's pretty much uh, when it comes to the gender unicorn, the gender bad person. And right now there's other gender bad person versions. So the three is already something I do not like, and the four is specifically also something I do not like. So I specifically wanted to address the unicorn because that's the one I see everywhere. And uh, the gender bad person, like the first versions, or I think that was the first one I was talking to about. Uh, they were the ones I relate to and I feel like are more beneficial. Now, obviously, everyone has their own sort of tools in their arsenal. And um, again, like being a future psychologist or about to get my license, whatever you want to call it, obviously, we all uh, have a certain theories, uh, certain materials we relate to, which we feel are more relevant. So obviously, just because I use the gender red person in talks, or I was taught it, or um, I've seen other people use it very, very well as well, uh, doesn't mean that it is the most valid way. 
and uh, I do not like the gender unicorn one and I shared my criticisms uh, people may disagree and uh, I just feel like we're really sort of making everything very binary again which is something that we've been fighting um, but people tend to sort of fall back into conservative views and this is something I talked about before like back um, back in the day like ages ago like when we're talking about like gay rights it was always like you love someone for who they are not what's in their pants and now everyone's like I'm a lesbian therefore I love pussy or I'm a guy therefore I like cocks and uh, that's really not the case we fall in love with uh, people. Sure, we like men, women, and binary people. But again, I am very, very strict about the fact that maybe it's just me, but I really think that it's shallow to sort of define yourself and exclude a very big amounts of people due to their genitals. I mean, if you're into guys and that's a guy, why would you refuse just because of genitals? But people are shallow. Um, yeah, I, I know I'm very sharp-tongued as well. So. so that's pretty much what I wanted to cover today. Um, I really hope this video helped. I really do hope that Somehow we will backpedal to the original gender bad person, fix a few things, like I said, and uh, yeah, on one hand, I'm very happy about the fact that this baby taught in schools. I just wish it was taught in a more comprehensive, less binary, less traditional woman men roles. But you know, so. Yeah. Thank you very much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I also want to say thank you very much for the love I've been getting. I really appreciate it. And if you like this video, please give it a like. If you feel free to leave a comment um, and feel free to share this video. Um, I would really appreciate it specifically in this case because obviously it is the gender unicorn is galloping around the world and I do think we need to have a discussion on how effective it is and the fact that trans people are not happy about it and I really think it should raise a few flags and it should be something that needs to be addressed. So yeah, thank you very much for watching. If you liked it, feel free to buy me a coffee. If not, feel free to just indulge in further videos.